Hi, so today we're going to talk about arithmetic series. Now we saw something earlier uh, in this unit about arithmetic sequence. Well, an arithmetic sequence, remember, is really just as it, the name suggests, a sequence of numbers or a simple list of numbers. But when we say the word series, we're looking for the total, the sum of the terms in that sequence. So in other words, the sequence precedes each term going as normal, but what we are interested in is what is the sum of that sequence. So if we want to take the, uh, we could also take the partial sum. We could take t1 plus t2 or t1 plus t2 plus t3 and so on. So for example, um, just something like this, or even t1 plus t2 plus t3 plus t4. Notice that uh, when we were expanding these terms uh, in terms of an arithmetic series, t1 was simply a, if you recall. t1 plus t2 had, well, a plus a was t1, and t2 was a plus the common difference. So then we ended up with, when we add, we ended up with a plus a plus d, or 2a plus d. For S3, well, it's t1 plus t2 plus t3, so that's kind of like a plus a plus d for t2, and a plus 2t, 2d for t3. So that's a plus a plus a, which is 3a, and d plus 2d, which is 3d. And for the fourth, I'll just shorten this by saying, well, really S4 is just S3 plus an extra term, right? T4. So T3, or sorry, S3 was already given as 3a plus 3d. So then we add another term, T4, which turns out to be a plus 3d going by the, by, uh, going by the uh, general equation. And so we get 3a plus a, which is 4a, and 3d plus 3d, which is 6d. The next section has to do with the general form for an arith arithmetic series. And what we're trying to do here is try to come up with a general formula. Now, so we have to resort to a little bit of trickery to get this to work. For example, notice that we can express the sum s of n going forwards. This, remember, was t1, that was t2, that was t3, and we can proceed by adding all the terms up to tn which could be a plus n times d, but I just left it written as tn. So, you know, that would be that. And then the sum going backwards would be tn plus the last term subtract d plus the last term subtract 2 times d. We're going backwards, so we're just listing the terms in reverse order. And finally ending at a. All right. Now the trick is, if we wanted to find the general formula, one part of the technique is to add these two together. So on this side of the equal sign, Sn plus Sn is just 2Sn. So that's what these two add up to. And then notice we get A plus Tn, which I'm just going to have A plus Tn here. And then look what happens. We get A plus Tn, and we get D minus D. Well, D minus D is 0. And we just get another A plus Tn. That's what's left over. But then look over here. We get a plus tn, like before, and then we get 2d minus 2d. Oh, okay. So then those 2ds cancel each other out, and we get just get another a plus tn. And we just proceed on and on and on. And finally, our last term is tn plus a, which is just another a plus tn term. And notice that a occurs n times, and tn occurs n times. It's as if that 2s of n is equal to n multiplied by a plus tn, because really the, the sum a plus tn occurs n times. So we can do this. Now we divide both sides by 2, and finally our general formula for our sum is n over 2 times a plus tn. 
meaning that what we need to know for the general formula of the arithmetic series is the last term in the series and we need to know the number of terms and we need to know the first term. So those are three bits of information we need to know in order to find the sum using this equation. Also you might want to know something else. Remember the summation s, s sub n which was equal to n over 2 multiplied by a plus tn. You remember that? Well, and I said that that was an important formula. There's another way of expressing this formula, and that's because Tn is really equal to uh, a plus d times n minus 1, if you remember that expansion uh, from uh, the arithmetic sequence. So then if we now substitute this, it will turn out that you don't even need to know the nth term. You just need to know a and d and how many terms there are in the sequence. So then Sn by extension becomes n minus 2, n over 2 that is, times a plus all of this, a plus d times n minus 1. So we have n over 2, a's gather up, we get 2a plus, so we just get d times n minus 1. And now with this Sn, we don't even need to know the last term. But we do need to know something else. We do need to know the common difference. So this is the new piece of information you need to know. So it seems that you always need to know three bits of information, whether it's this formula, where you need to know n and a and tn, uh, which is the last term, or n and d and a. So either way, uh, you need to know three pieces of information. But at least you got two different ways with three slightly different pieces of information that you could use to find the summation of a series. So here's a sample problem. If we want to find S15 for say for T1 equals negative 12, T2 equals negative 8, T3 equals negative 4, and so on, how can we find the first 15, the sum of the first 15 terms? Well, it looks like in this case we need to use this because we're not, we're not told what the last term is in the sequence. So uh, n, n is definitely 15 because we got it from here. It's given in the question. If we say s of 15, then we mean that n is 15. a is the first term. It's negative 12. Um, what about, okay, what about the common difference? Because we need to know that. Well, it's really the t2 minus t1, negative 8 minus negative 12. Well, that's like negative 8 plus 12, and that's 4. So I'm going to apply this one because we don't know the last term. We're not given that in the question. So s of 15 is equal to 15 over 2 multiplied by 2 times negative 12, because that's what a is, plus d times n minus 1. Well, that's 15 minus 1, which is 14. So now let's work out what's in the brackets. I'll just clear all this. So 2 times negative 12 plus, what's D? D was 4. 4 times 14. So we're adding 4 times 14. And we get 32. So this becomes 15 halves times 32. Well, that's like 15 times 16. So this is times 15 divided by 2. And so 15 times 16, we get 240, which checks out with the textbook. Okay, this, this, um, this question was an example 2 on pages 397 to 398.